In this video, we're going to do the final two sections of the cash flow statement and then link everything together. So in addition to the cash from operations, we also have the middle section, which is cash from investing, and then the final section, which is cash from financing. So in investing, if we scroll up to our balance sheet, we know that we've already used all of our current assets up and our current liabilities. So the only investment account that would go in here is our fixed assets. So I'm going to use my change in formula, copy that down, and then adjust the Excel row to the fixed assets. And then I will copy one of my asset formulas down because this is also an asset. However, the one change we're going to be making is fixed assets has depreciation factored into it as well. So we need to strip out the depreciation to get a true sense of what the capex or capital expenditures are. So first I'm just going to adjust the formula for it to link up to the fixed asset section and then lastly I'm going to subtract out our depreciation. And now I could link the depreciation to where it's already existing in the cash flow statement but I would rather link back to the original source as opposed to linking to a link. It just keeps everything a little bit cleaner. So I'll press enter there and that's done. One change I will make to this formula is that I'm also going to add a little clause here that just says capex so that I remember. Okay, now since this is the only investing line item, this is a quick section. So I'm just going to copy down my formatting from here, type in total cash from investing and then update this formula control equals and it automatically selected the investing section so one last time if i control open bracket i go up to my fixed assets and i highlight them yellow to know that i've used it f5 enter brings me back to where i was so what do we have left well we have the debt we have the contributed capital and we have the retained earnings and all of those are going to be reflected in the financing section and you might be saying to yourself, well, retained earnings shouldn't go in there. And you would be right, except one thing we're going to do is we're going to add it to our cash flow statement, but we're going to strip out any impact of the net income. So it will ultimately be zero. And the reason we're going to do that is because when we build the pro forma balance sheet in a future video, some of the transaction expenses will immediately hit retained earnings. And that will be the way that we pick them up in our cash flow statement. So let's copy down this formula. change in debt, then drag it down and adjust the row accordingly, change in contributed capital, change in retained earnings. And in the financing section, we'll use the same formula that we use for a liability. So it will be the current period minus the previous period. So I'm just dragging up these cells to the applicable location. And then when I drag this formula down, I will again drag the cells to the applicable location. And then lastly, the retained earnings, you see I've dragged it down again. I'm going to be subtracting out the net income because we're just trying to figure out any impacts to the retained earnings that aren't net income. So that would be, in our case, transaction expenses, or it would be dividends. So it pulled out the net income there, and it is zero. So if we trace back everything that we've built, our debt has been used, the contributed capital has been used, and the retained earnings has been used. So if we look at our balance sheet in whole, we've looked at or touched on every single line item except for the cash. So that's how I know that we are complete. So I will copy my formatting one more time, label this total cash from financing, update my formula with all equals, and then I'm done. So the last thing we have to do is just link it all together to make sure it works. And we'll be creating a running balance of cash at the bottom. So we're going to start with beginning cash, change in cash, and then ending cash. So where does our ending cash come from? Well, in January of 15, our ending cash comes directly from the balance sheet. So I pull it from up there. Then in February, our beginning cash is just the ending cash from the previous month. And then our ending cash in February will be the sum of the beginning cash plus the change in cash. So what's the change in cash? Well, that's actually what we just built above. So that is the sum of our cash from operations plus our cash from investing plus our cash from financing. And the bottom is 30894 
So let's scroll up and see what's on our balance sheet. And it is good news. It is also 30894. So we know that everything matches. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring down another check formula because I want to make sure that the ending cash in my cash flow statement always matches the ending cash in my balance sheet. So I'll paste it to bring all the formulas with me, all the formats with me, excuse me, and then press F2 to adjust the formula. And I see that it's a zero and it's turned green. So I'm going to copy this to designate it as a check cell. And then I'm just going to highlight January gray like I did up above to acknowledge that I know it's supposed to be blank and just to confirm that I didn't miss anything. So now that we know February balances, all we have to do is drag this formula over to the right and we should get every month to the balance. So I've highlighted the entire column. I'm going over to the right and press Control R and I've dragged out our entire cash flow statement and it looks like everything perfectly balances through the historical period, which is great news. You notice that a couple of these check cells have turned red, which means they are not technically zero. So I'm just going to double check them really quick by pressing Control Alt and then the right arrow. And I see that really this pretty much is zero. There must just be a rounding error way out in a decimal place. So what I'm going to do is change this formula and add a round function and then round it to the second digit, which basically means rounding it to the cent. And when I copy this formula over, you can see they've all turned green, so I know that it was just a minor rounding error and not an issue in the financial data. As I mentioned in a previous video, we'll be taking all of these check cells and check rows and we will be linking them to a summary page so that we can make sure everything is correct before we submit our model. And now we've reached the end of formatting all of our historical data. We have a cleaned up income statement, a cleaned up balance sheet, and a cash flow statement that we know works. So we have now finally got to the end where we at least feel comfortable with the history. And now we have to move on to the challenging part of the exercise and what we're requested to do by the managing partner, which is to build the forecast to see if this investment actually makes sense for the private equity firm. So we're going to get into that in the next video.